I heard a pastor once say when he had a dilemma, he said that God spoke to him. Um, I don't think it's like an audible voice that he heard. No. How do you know if God is actually speaking to you and trying to direct your life in a certain path? Yeah, though I walk through the valley at the shadow of death. Hello. So on this episode of On Fire for Christ, we want to discuss um, how do we know if indeed what a man of God is saying that they have received from God is really from God. We usually hear men of God who say that God told me this, that God said this, that God revealed to me that this. And so on this episode, we want to see how can we ascertain that this is indeed the voice of God. But before we do that, you want to quickly smash a like for this video. You want to go subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Um, the statistics show that many people watch this channel but don't subscribe to the channel. So please um, help the channel to grow in one way or the other. Kindly subscribe and like this video. Um, recently, we saw a video... Um, that has trended for like two, three weeks now of Apostle Johnson, Suleiman, who said um, some things concerning the authority of Paul in the scriptures. Um, he tried to shade Paul in a way that Paul doesn't carry as much authority as Jesus does in the Bible. And even as Paul cannot be compared to who Jesus Christ is, the word of God is the word of God. The word of God is who he is. It is who God himself is. And so his word doesn't differ from one person to the other. It is the same word of God. And so we hear him try to debate his case. And he says that God said to him, that God revealed to him that this is how he has to relate to the scriptures. And he said that. So I now said, Lord, there's something wrong. I locked my door. I took days. I began to pray. And Jesus told me. He said, what is preaching is the message of Paul. They are the revelations of Paul. They are not my revelations. He said, even Peter warned you to be careful of the letters of Paul. What's going on? So I went to go and pray. And the Lord told me that you are preaching Paul. You are not preaching me. And the Lord told me that. Um, God told him that Paul's letters should be secondary to Jesus' words. That Jesus' words are more important or more precious than Paul's words. In other words, trying to make us understand that there are some portions of scripture that are more important than the other. But we also know in the book of 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture, every single thing in the Bible, every dot, every jot, every word, every letter, every sentence, every chapter, every book, every verse. All these things are important because God inspired men to write them down for our benefit. That a man of God may be made complete. That this word makes the man of God complete, makes the Christian complete complete and so there's nothing else that we need from any other place to augment the word of god or to supplement the word of god as if the word of god is not enough and in this generation these are the things you are hearing but in this episode um, we want to discuss how do we know that this is indeed the word of god how do we know that this is indeed god speaking to you very difficult question and the reason it's so difficult, because obviously there have been some horrible abuses, right? David Koresh, God spoke to me. Jimmy Jones, God spoke to me. Almost every single Christian cult is based on someone who says, God spoke to me, and this is what he said. That is why you better be very skeptical whenever anybody says to you, God spoke to me. And what you better do is you better listen hard to what they say, and then you better compare it to what Jesus said. And if it contradicts what Jesus said in any way, say, well, thank you, but no thanks. Second point. Yes, it is possible that God does speak to different individuals. How does he do that? He does that through his Holy Spirit. He does that by changing our desires, by giving us an urging, a leading in a certain direction. He does that by speaking to us through other people, through circumstances, I never once have audibly heard God's voice, but I believe that he has led me through changing my desires, changing my thought patterns. I believe that he has guided me that way. But you always have to be very, very careful whenever anybody says, well, God is leading me to do this. Ask him why, why do you think that? The guy out here yesterday said, essentially, he said, I believe in God, but not in Jesus. I said, really, tell me what the God is like that you believe in. He said, oh, I believe that God loves me. I said, really, how did you find that out? 
He said, in here. I said, what do you mean, in here? He said, well, I got a feeling. God loves me. And I said, well, how do you know that's not just indigestion you're having over lunch? That feeling in here. See, you've got to be skeptical about just feelings that come over you. You've got to ask, where do these feelings come from? Who's really doing the talking here? Is it just my own selfishness? Is it some Satan or a demonic influence? Or is it really God speaking to me? You gotta be skeptical. You gotta ask yourself, why do I trust whatever it is or whoever it is I'm trusting? See, that's why I would plead with you. Read the Gospels. Get to know Jesus. And then if you have an urging in a particular direction and it's in an agreement with Jesus, go for it, friend. Go for it. But if it contradicts Jesus, question it. Be skeptical. Across Africa, you have seen many, many cults. And even in the world where we've seen cults who have bent people down. There was a cult in Uganda or one of these countries where somebody guarded the whole church. Men, women alike, children bent the whole building down because he said this is what God told him to do. In America, we heard of Jim Jones do a similar thing. We have seen people who have led people to chewing grass, drinking all kinds of things. And they claim that this is what God told them to do. And so how do we really know that what you are telling us is what God is telling us? Because we understand that general revelation has to do with what God has revealed to the whole world. The things that we see, the trees, the sky, the plants, the, the, the human beings, the things that we see that God has created. These things are general. Everybody can see that, no, we, there, there's something that goes beyond us. And these things should point you to looking at who created all this world and why you have to look for him. And then we have specific revelation. We talks about um, the scripture. We see um, visions and dreams and all these things as presented in the Bible. And we see the word of God itself. We see Jesus Christ himself being a specific revelation of who God is or what God is all about. And so if somebody comes to tell us that he has a personal revelation, the only way we can be able to measure that revelation is by comparing it to what the Word of God says. The reason why this is the case is because the Word of God is infallible. That God's Word is never mistaken. It is always right. It is always true. There's no falsehood to the Word of God. It is infallible. It doesn't fall down on any level. And because of this, we can trust the Word of God. And so if we can trust the Word of God, then it means that whatever you tell us has to be in line with what the Bible is saying. But if what you are telling us is different from what the Bible is saying, then obviously we have to reject whatever you are saying, no matter how spiritual you make it sound or look. And we talk about general revelations and specific revelations. And we say that it is what God has revealed today that we can trust. What God has revealed in his 66 books is what we can trust. That everything else, when they come to support what is in the Bible, we still work with the Bible. Because that is what we can trust. When they come and they are different from what is in the Bible, we still work with the Bible. Because why? That is what we can trust. That is the word of God. That is the God-breathed word of God. The inspired word of God. Not what, oh, God told me. I had a dream and God said this. All your dreams are good, all your things, your visions are good, but they are only good when we compare them to the scriptures and they fall in the same place. And even when they fall in the same place, we don't walk with your dream, we walk with the foundation which is the word of God. No matter how spiritual you make it sound or look, that doesn't change anything. We have to be firm on this because the moment you allow people to bring extra revelations to the word of God, it means that people will start belittling what the Bible is all about. And that is what exactly is happening right now, that people try their best to make the Bible look so bad in the eyes of everybody, try to put their own authority onto the Bible. And that's another aspect of the, the, the Bible, that the Bible has the authority, or the only authority that we need in guiding us to our Christian work, that we don't take authority from any man from any man's visions or his dreams. There are people who have had contrary ideas and all these things they claim that they are coming from God. And so, like I keep on saying, even if what you are saying relates to the Bible or is in line with the Bible, it means that the Bible is still true, so we work with the Bible. Whatever you are saying, whatever dream and vision you have, even if you align it with the scriptures and it's in line with the scriptures, we work with the scriptures. If it is not in line with the scriptures, we outrightly reject it. And this is the reason why we can reject what 
Apostle Johnson Suleiman is saying because it is not scriptural that you elevate Jesus' words above Paul's words. It's never scriptural. It has never been done in the early church. It has never been done anywhere, even amongst the apostles. They preached the same message. Nobody elevated anybody's message above the other. When Paul had an issue with one of the churches that they were trying to elevate Paul above Apollos and Apollos above Paul and they had camps and all it. Paul told them that Paul planted Apollos watered. It is God that causes an increase. The two of them are not in any comparison. They are not fighting against one another. They are all doing the same job. And so the inerrancy of the scripture that is not fallible and the authority that it carries supersedes any other man. Men are fallible. They can come and tell you today that this is what God has told them. But when you go and check, it is not true. And there have been many, many, many instances. And I'm by this not saying that God is not speaking to people. All I'm saying is that it doesn't really carry any weight more than what the Bible says. If God speaks to you and it's in line with the scripture, still the scripture reigns supreme. If God speaks to you and it's not in line with the scripture, the scripture still remains supreme. And so if you have benefited from any of these, kindly go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.